It is time to bring in David Tarachuk and the Media Beat. David joins us live on a Friday. We will be broadcasting over the weekend, and also I do believe it's on Monday or Tuesday, uh, right after the 12 noon news. I really should look at the schedule that Jill and I made uh, to take a look at it. But uh, it's uh, David Tarachuk's time now with the Media Beat. He uh, has his own uh, website, themediabeat.us. Uh, also, he's a PBS television correspondent reporting on ethics and belief and posts at the Huffington Post as well. Good morning, David. How are you this morning? Well, I'm well. How are you? I'm, I'm actually, I know. I think I know how you are because I was listening to your, your estimable broadcast. It's estimable even when I'm not on it myself. Uh, I say that modest, modestly. Um, and I'm so delighted to hear that you're playing some feel-good music every day. Uh, a little, a little, a little bit of music goes a long way, and, and I, and I'm glad. I, I mean, I applaud the principle of putting it out there as a counter uh, to some of the what I think I heard you call the mishmash out there. Uh, somebody else might call it mishigas. I, <laughs> That's right. I'm not sure, but yes, uh, anything that helps uh, and, and, and keeps us in a uh, or at least uh, prompt, uh, you know, pushes us a little bit towards a better mood is a, is a good thing. It's it's not there's an awful lot of bad mood, <laughs> bad mood, bad, bad mood news. I can't say that word, that phrase. Bad mood news is which is which, of course, is what we get a lot of now. There's a lot of it out there. Well, the great thing about uh, about playing music from like the 70s, uh, which would be good for me because I'm 66 years old, is that it makes you feel better because you forget that it was probably just as tough back then as it is now, but it still makes you feel better. And you get away from all the give and take. I mean, there's some incredible news stories out there. And yes, uh, the the... The incredible width and breadth of the Congress that is coming into the United States is simply an amazing news story with all the women, all the different ethnicities coming in on the Democratic side. That really is truly an incredible story. But there's so many other stories out there that could be covered uh, that that even broke just yesterday, uh, like uh, the big hacking in Germany uh, and, and and other stories. I, I you know the, the networks last night. Even though I watched a movie last night, uh, before I watched the movie, every single network, cable network anyway, uh, was just hammering down uh, Donald Trump and the Congress. And you know, you, you just got to get away from it. You mean Washington? You just, oh, wow. You just, no, it wasn't even Washington. Washington, the focus of the world. Yes. Of course. It, yeah. Certainly the focus of the world's attention if you're in cable news. It's, uh, no but, question but, about but that. But Marshall's point is uh, a, a, well taken and B, necessary. But the really uh, mildly alarming thing at this point is if you even have the capacity to think short term, any uh, long term, after 20 years of screens, you, you know, if then. You should be planning what you're going to do when this is no longer the focus of attention. Because you know what, <laughs> the guy's either got two more years or five more years. It's but it's just you know. You know it's, what I mean, it's, so it's, you, you you should be planning ahead for what you're going getting to getting towards six. Yeah, sure. But um, what journalism is yeah, going? Yeah, and, and, and I mean all the, all all administrations come and go. We know that. Uh, but I mean, I think uh, certainly many. Uh, and, and again, you know, the, the cable news people are the, are the ones on my crosshairs. Anyway, they're, they're the worst uh, proponents of this. Um, but uh, the, the notion of living in the now has been taken to a ridiculous extreme. Uh, it, it's as if there is nothing happening except the yeah, one yeah. focus. And, uh, it's gonna and, make and, and of course, we know that's not true. The rest of the world does tick on. The, inter- the interesting thing about that is that you know you can still cover uh, what's going on uh, in Congress because yes, of course, you have the, the shutdown. You can still cover. I'm not saying not to cover that, but I'm saying you can cover it with the other hard news that's out there, and you know, intersperse it. So, uh, in, in radio, David, when I was young, uh, I, I had uh, I had a. A person come and speak uh, to our station. He was invited in. He was a media expert back then. And even back then, he said, it doesn't matter whether you're playing music or whether you're a talk radio station or whether you're, you're, you're a news radio station. You have to break it up every once in a while with something that makes people feel good about themselves. You just have to. Well, it'd be like eating all chocolate. If you don't break up all chocolate... It's like if you eat only chocolate, all chocolate, because yay, chocolate's good if you like chocolate, whatever. 
or all potatoes, because yay, potatoes are good, you like potatoes, uh, at some point you're going to realize that you're on a really uh, circumscribed, proscribed diet, and but, but other things are going to, you know, I a little... I sure, and, and, I, and I think one of the, you know, what, and whatever your motive is, and I, and I applaud the motive to make people feel good, but uh, on the other hand, I don't think that's the primary, uh, jo- the, the primary job of journalists. No, but, no, but, but, what, but the, you know, I, and I've said it uh, along with you guys many times over. But uh, what the, one of the best phrases I can ever hear from the BBC World Service, which still remains one of the best, the world's best broadcasters, uh, is a priceless phrase. And now other news. Yeah, and, <laughs> and that's, even, even when you've got a really, really big story, but, but David, you, you know you need to focus on. But you <laughs> still know there are other things besides that. Precisely, your, your well, story that ran this weekend is a good is is a good example. It's news. It is news. It is actually even contemporary current news. But you know what? You watch it, and it does not. It's a break. It's a break from Your the on-the-spot news. The point. That yeah, you, I mean, I, I make a point of that, of course. When I, when I, the, the story you're referring to is the one I did about the the, the country's most uh, uh, highest-ranking Muslim judge who's in California, and and yes, that was that was kind of current news, but it was off the main beam, yeah. of course. Uh, and and, and that, I I do find that valuable. I mean. I, Side lighting is, is every bit as, uh, well, it's not as powerful, but it's every bit as useful, I think, as full on, blaring but, uh, but, 50 kilowatt uh, but, searchlight. But it corresponded with what happened in Washington. That's the great thing about it. Uh, once again, <clears throat> it, it, it brought out uh, the fullness and richness of American participation of the actual people who live in this yes, country. Yes, and it's all, but there's, there, there, there's something else, and this is frustrating to me. Um, First of all, both of you are making the same point. It's very well taken. Think about uh, an exhibition at a gallery or think about a Broadway show or think about it. You know, it's not just relentless. It's not the same speed and the same relentless uh, information all the time. It's, it's There's some scenery. There's you got to leaven it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And mix it up a bit. One of the things those. about design and newspapers is the layout, the, the way that it, I'm sorry, quote, quote, used to be. You know, instead of just this constant scroll with ads, um, it used to be laid out in a way that made your mind look at different things and, you know, widen. But what I want to um, go to based on your story and based on what Marshall's saying is, and this was pointed out to me by someone else entirely who I really wouldn't have expected it from and who is part of the very market that journal- that, that newspapers, whatever, are trying to reach. And what she said, <clears throat> I will give away her gender, is she said, what's really frustrating about what's happening now is you're making everybody a victim group. <laughs> and mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's striking to me because, again, I know I'm ancient, but the way we were brought up was, hey, you're competent? Come sit over here. And I guess no matter what you are, I guess what I, what, what, what amazes no, there's nobody that's more anti Donald Trump than me, and and Joe will say that uh, it, it's to the point of aggravation to to some of my friends, but there's nobody that's more anti. But you know, I I just can't sit there and watch hours and hours and hours of 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 focusing in on something that I disagree with so much um, that it. It becomes even more bothersome for me, yeah, where it takes away it takes away uh, f- it takes away all my interest to want to watch news, and that's a terrible thing because you have to be informed, you have to read, and you have to watch. You really do uh, as much as you can and take in as much as you can. Yeah, and I think yeah, that- and the tendency the, <clears throat> the tendency to to uh, you know bunch people into groups that. Uh, you can probably fairly call uh, victim groups, uh, as your critic was suggesting. Um, uh, I, I, I think that's that's almost the. It's not the quintessence of, of the function, but but uh, I know that uh, cable news and the, the click hungry uh, web news websites, or not so much news, but sort of pa- partisan uh, bubble websites that uh, dominate the. 
the web now uh, is to create is to stir up a sense of outrage that seems to be that we're you're talking about everything the risk of everything becoming just monotonal and the, and the monotone is outrage uh, that seems to be what everybody is trying that, to cultivate that is and a, succeeding a lot of the time that and, is, and, 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 and that's and such an unrestricted diet as we know is extremely unhealthy if we all go around being outraged all the time we're, we're in a terrible state you know that's a great point i never thought about that i mean there's nothing wrong with self-motivated outrage but when outrage is given to you on a plate time and time again to keep you outraged that's the problem. Absolutely. I mean, but, but, I, it, but, it, it, it's, but that's it seems the business. to be the function of most uh, cable anchors these that's, days. That's, uh, to rouse everybody up and get them angry and pissed off. And, uh, and then uh, sell them drugs. I'm sorry. Yeah, med- absolutely. No, no, but, and then but, sell them drugs while... <laughs> <laughs> which break comes, which yeah. ha- exactly which have side effects and you know what 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 is really sad about that is it's working as a business model, uh, and it is causing just decided yeah and the, equi- and the equivalent online with all the clickbait oh. that is used in the same way yeah. uh, goes to uh, reaffirm that point yeah. And the, uh, the, the w- what it is doing to people's brains and their functionality is just truly alarming. Uh, we had this, w- w- I, I'm, I'm still reeling from this particular thing. One of our underwriters, y- you know, y- their underwriting contract is the equivalent of a ham sandwich to that company. And they wanted some <laughs> back, no, no, seriously, it's like, it's, it's not going to cause yeah, bankruptcy. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. so. Five dollars a week, but. Pretty much, in 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 their um, lens. That, so um, a few months back, a full quarter ago, they asked for some backup. Okay, fine, fair enough, it's reasonable. So it was sent along, and yet, and and it was confirmed, and yet, still nothing. Right? No, no ham sandwich. Um, so we uh, started pursuing it yesterday and the first thing that happened was the uh woman we we, we <coughs> it was sent on a thread that had the attachments and the uh person we contacted answered back oh well i never got them but unfortunately she had said i never got them on something that had them right attached to it so all we basically had to say is oh well <coughs> scroll down why don't you <laughs> Yeah, there's no door. Mm-hmm. But it's just the constant exposure to screens is causing people to not be able to delineate. It's just like there's no delineation. It's all, it's all like watching a running loop, and that's that is causing th- that that's causing problems. And it's uh, it's it's affecting people's ability. Yeah, in my problems view. of cognition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> I think you're right. I mean, at the base, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's a it's a numbing experience to watch this material in, in any great quantity. You, you do see the same thing again and again. You certainly hear the same arguments being made again and again with ever increasing sense of uh, vituperation and uh, frenzy. Uh, and of course, it's. Uh, I mean, there, there will be. You know, there will be brain science research into this. And what its effect is, is on on I mean, we we actually work in our cortex. Um, it's uh, and your instinct tells me it, it just can't be good for us. No, and at the very least. And so, on top of the Sabbath that you frequently re- recommend, um, going back to. Um, just playing music. Everyone knows that music has its uh, benefits, and uh, just it's it, it's not so much to make people feel good as an antidote. It's to just widen the lens. It's it's very much way back in the day when people had actual and some people still do, of course, but actual cameras with actual lenses. You know, you had to have a wide angle lens. You had to have a telephoto lens, and you had your just plain lens. Um. And that there, the that's what magazines used to be for. That's what long form used to be for. And now, since everything is pretty much, we're we're told that this is the only way. <coughs> you, screen is the only way that you can sample 
because uh, no one's interested in anything else. Uh, you're just doing a massive disservice to the information pool. Massive. And, Absolutely. Uh, and uh, what what needs to be figured out, uh, we're past media literacy at this point, what needs to be figured out is, okay, how can you create a balanced information diet? Because if everything is coming from, I d when I say one source, I simply mean a screen, uh, it's not it's not balanced. Yeah, and, and and we have to do we have to work a little better on our own behalf, uh, seeking out uh, seeking out that variation which is so important to us, uh, to, to the health of our mind and the the the, the overall health of the nation. I think, um, uh, and and the world. I mean, it's hap it's happening everywhere. It's a, it's pretty much the same in Europe. I have to say, without the without the quite the same degree of frenzy. Uh, but it, but the, the idea of there being a bubble and uh, everyone taking their information from pretty much the same source, uh, <clears throat> depending on where, where they are in the political spectrum, uh, is, is, is the hard one to break. Uh, and uh, encouraging people to take in a variation in their diet is, uh, I would have thought, the, the, the sine qua non of the basis of all of this, uh, the basis of any any real substantial media mediation. You know, I was listening to a morning edition coming in this uh, this morning at the station, and I NPR to me should try to emulate. I think they try to emulate. They don't succeed. BBC, but for the first time, literally, I can say, and I can't remember when. Uh, they had a guest on, and he was speaking about why he thinks the United States should pull out of Afghanistan. And at first, uh, I, I didn't agree with what he, his initial things were. But finally, the host let him speak for about five and a half minutes. And, you know, by the time he finished That's an speaking— awful long time on yeah, NPR. But, but by the time he finished— be uninterrupted, I yeah, I— you know, by the time he finished, his points made sense. They made sense when he got a chance. When he got a chance to explain, the opportunity for cogent argument. There you uh, go. Yeah, there and you, you have go. to listen to that. That was the the reason that point counterpoint the Saturday night Live, was successful, and the reason that Dan Aykroyd and Jane Curtin will remain ever involved. Yeah, yeah, you know, like ever inscribed in memory for their. Um, Saturday Night Live version of it is because you took it you you took a you you took a topic and then you argued the different sides. There's never in the world been only one point of view, never. And it's asinine, excuse me, to try to get people to think that. It's just like and I suppose it. the main point is that it was argued in full rather than simply well, in bits um, <laughs> yeah the rattle of a machine gun from either side well that's staccato interruption going being the main uh, the, the, the main tone of the of the, the main uh, means by which uh, ideas were supposedly exchanged but yeah. you see the, but but then the media took point counterpoint and I remember watching that uh, when I was much younger, and I remember watching the Saturday Night version of it, Jane, you were doing slot. All that was Dan, very, you misguided was, was, moron. Well, it was very funny and stuff <laughs> like that. But but the show itself, count, point counterpoint, was a condensed show. Unfortunately, now we have this twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, and we have the point counterpoint coming from people we don't really care about. You know, yeah, it's, and it's, about five five seconds were given to each point. Of yeah, course. yeah, that's, that's, <clears throat> at that's, most. Yeah. yeah, one of the alarming things for me is is the short attention span uh, condition that it's breeding in, in all of us. Uh, the last uh, the last detailed study of uh, the actual length of uh, sound bites uh, on television conducted during I think it was the 2012 election campaign showed that the average length of a soundbite on, on American news broadcasts was uh, five, uh, eight seconds. So, <laughs> if that's the average, uh, some of them, I imagine, would have been two or three seconds. Uh, and that's an appalling uh, symptom uh, to home in on, uh, to think that, that, that that's, that's, that's the currency of our exchange of ideas now. Eight seconds on average for a person for a thought.
You know, I don't mind uh, if I'm watching election coverage and there's a panel of people discussing the different things going on on election night. I don't mind that. I don't mind the give and take. I don't mind the, the tit for tat. I don't. I I, I find well, that, sure it's that, part of human exchange. That's uh, that, but but you can't have that on every single damn subject in the world. You can't bring in a panel of six people uh, to talk about uh, to, to talk about everything on a day by day basis. It just doesn't work. And, and like you say, those. Six Six people that come in might be very qualified people to speak, but they but for eight being, seconds. It's they're really not useless. qualified <laughs> for eight to ten seconds, uh, and then they, then they get into shouting matches. And it's it's designed. Sure, and the, and the screen <clears throat> the screen has got to be extended in either direction. Or at least the framing of the screen is going to be extended in every direction, uh, or the, the the left side and the right side, obviously, because uh, the, the size of a panel is now generally deemed to be. Uh, six people at a minimum. I, I mean, I, I saw on CNN once a, a parade of ten people uh, in some kind of soft U shape uh, across my screen. I'm thinking, wh wh why did they do this? This, this is self-evidently insane. <laughs> that's a great way. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> it's better than misguided moron. <laughs> <laughs> They, which, which you can say you can't you can no longer say the other thing but you can yeah, say that uh -huh. all right um you know thank you very much david tereshuk the media beat thank you of course david joins us on a friday morning and as i say we rebroadcast it uh, on the weekend and also on monday on monday at, at, noon. at about 1205 right, right after the bbc news and you can always find it at robinhoodradio.com click on on demand click on uh, david tereshuk the media beat